Okay, and welcome back to the second video podcast in the Talking Reef podcast. Um, as you can see, um, I'm wearing the same stuff, so I'm recording this on the same night that I did the phytoplankton show. Uh, but we're probably gonna this will be a different day that you're getting it. So uh, since I was doing the one, I always do them at the same time, so it's just easier to record them both at the same time. So uh, in this show, what I'm going to show you is basically the second part of what I do, which is the rotifers. Uh, how, how they're set up, how they're cultured, and how I feed them and, and collect them and then feed them to the tank and stuff like that. So again, let's take a walk over to the other room and I'll show you how all that's done. Let's go. Okay, so here we are again in my little laboratory. You can see the phytoplankton always stays above uh, the rotifers because you need to keep them separated. Uh, if you can keep them in separate rooms, it's even better. Um, but so far, I've had this going for well over a year, and it's, so far it's done real well for me. So let's take a closer look here. You can see the different shadings of the different bottles. This one was just fed not too long ago. You can see it's a darker green. Uh, this is the middle bottle. Uh, and this is the one that we're going to uh, extract some rotifers from to feed the tank. Um, these are all set up the same way. We've got the little um, things up here on the top, the rigid airline tubing with the air tubes going up. Uh, there's a couple different ways to culture rotifers uh, like this or in like a 10 gallon tank and you don't and it's a little bit different setup but this is how I do it so that's what I'm going to show you how to do both are equally good ways to do it uh, but I just had real good luck with this so uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab this bottle and then I'm going to take you over and show you how we split it okay so we're back over here I pulled my bottle my rotifer bottle now I'm going to kind of bring you up a little bit close so you can kind of see this is some pretty nasty stuff in here. Um, we got a lot of algae growth on the side. That's from the lighting. Um, this does not have to be lit. Uh, I have mine over there. I've got lights back there because that's pretty much the same place where I do my um, growing for my hatching of my brine shrimp eggs and my baby brine shrimp. So that's why my lights over there because those do need light to kick off that process. So. I've got this over there. They can be lit. They don't have to be lit. Uh, that's just the way mine's set up. But because I do have light over there, I do get this algae growth on there that you can see. Um, some pretty nasty stuff at the bottom. Uh, this stuff's a little bit different. It doesn't have to be cleaned out completely when we do the split. So uh, let's go ahead and extract some stuff from here. So we're going to take the lid off. Uh, again, we're going to use the same collection cup. This is what I showed you on the last show. Uh, this is a 53 micron uh, collection filter. Uh, we can see we've got the, the filter screen inside there. Very, very fine filter. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the same empty cup. Like I said, I have two of these that I keep around. I'm going to take this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour out some of the this rotifer water that's in here. Through here, it's going to collect the rotifers in here and it's going to drain into here. Now the reason I do this is because I'm going to have this much to put back in there. So I'm not trying to guess and figure out exactly how much I need. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and and spill it all over the place. Okay. Well, now that I just kind of made a mess all over the place. I don't normally do that, but that's okay. Now what we can do is we can try to take a look in here. See the, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see there's a dark band at the bottom there. I'll show you a little closer later. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way and all you guys are done laughing at me for spilling this stuff all over me and you know who you are. Um, what we got left over, like I showed you, is our collection of rotifers. We've got the water that we pulled out of there and we use this as a measuring. And then we've got the other bottle here and basically all we're going to do is if you remember from last time I stored my uh, one bottle in here of the phytoplankton now I'll see if I can do this without spilling it all over myself we're just going to pour that right in there it's going to top it right back off I don't even need to worry about it because I know how much I took out that's it I'm going to put the lid right back on it and that's going to go right back over to the shelf now, as far as um, getting this stuff out of here. Now, when you buy these, you have the option of a collection beaker is what they call it. And what we're going to do here, uh, I'll show you in one minute. I've got to get one more thing that I left. Uh, so I'll show you how we pull them out of here. 
So just give me one second. Okay, and what we're going to use here is a famous little turkey baster. Now, if you don't have one of these, what do you, you don't belong in the hobby. Everybody has one of these. If you don't have one, go get one or else. So basically, this is a pretty easy thing. So we're going to take our collection cup with our rotifers in there. And you can kind of see them down here in the bottom. A little bit of the brown stuff that's on there, that's all the rotifers. It looks really small, but once you get it in the water, you'll see there's just loads of them in there. Uh, this is how these work. Basically, we take this, turn it upside down, and you can see on the back side, here's all our rotifers. We're going to get some water and our turkey baster. And I'm just going to take it and kind of pour it right over the back side here to get so you don't see any of the brown stuff anymore. And we can see it's all pretty much gone. And what that's going to leave us with is this nice little orange water. Um, I'm sure we can't see it at all on here, but uh, if you're looking in person when you actually go and do this, you'll see that it is just totally loaded up with rotifers and you'll see them all in there. So uh, that's pretty easy and that's all there is to that. This will go and be fed into the tank or uh, for your fish fry, larva, whatever you happen to do with it, great coral food. Um, I've got three bottles of this culturing. I've got that much going because I do the, the clownfish uh, eggs and all that fun stuff. But when I don't have eggs and larvae to feed, uh, then it's coral food. And the stuff in the tank just loves it. Uh, sometimes I'll put it right into my refugium. Sometimes I'll put it into the tank itself. Doesn't really matter. Everything loves it. Um, that's pretty much it. The excess water gets disposed of. Um, Rotifer crashes can happen. Uh, and from what I found, uh, I, I've had my photo, like I said, I've had it crash once in the last year. Um, I've never had my Rotifers crash. Um, but if they do crash, it's very easy to fix. Uh, in the bottle, what you want to do is you want to drain out, like I did, all the bad stuff, <clears throat> all the water. You want to try to get down to the bottom, kind of get that stuff out of there. And then what you'll find at the bottom is this icky, nasty, grungy slime. And what happens when the rotifers uh, get stressed out, they drop these cyst eggs. And that all collects at the bottom. And what you do is you get that stuff out of there, you put it into another container, and you fill it back up with phytoplankton, and you got another instant start. So um, with the rotifers, even when you have a crash, you can usually get it started right back up pretty easily. Now with the phytoplankton that we did on the last show, it's a little bit harder. If you don't have uh, a good... Uh, culture to start from, then you might have to go back out and get the the uh, culture discs, to the starter discs, um, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, again, that's going to wrap it up. And if you've got any questions about rotifer culturing or from the show that we did last time about the phytoplankton culturing, uh, make sure you head over to the forums. Uh, post any and all your questions there in the forums, or feel free to email me if you need to. Uh, so that's going to about do it. And um, hope you all learned something. Talk to you later.